So in this lecture, we've been talking a lot about the behavior of polynomials. We talked about the in behavior, what happens is go to the far right and the far left. We talked about the factor theorem and how it's related to the x-intercepts of the function. The next thing I want to talk about is the idea of a turning point. That is places on the graph where it changes directions. Now we've talked about these before. Turning points are really just going to be our local minima and our local maxima or the local extrema that we've talked about before. So you see this idea about turning points. Be aware, this is nothing different than what we've talked about before. Uh, we're talking about our local extrema. The thing that I wanna make clear about turning points though, is that in this situation, a turning point on a polynomial is always gonna be a smooth transition. You don't have something like, like zit, 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 nothing like lightning bolts or zigzags or whatever. When you turn directions on a polynomial, it's always gonna be a smooth transition, always a rounded turn. Oh, it's nice and smooth. It doesn't poke you when you try to pet your polynomial right here. The number of turning points, the number of extrema on a polynomial graph, if F is a polynomial of degree N, the number of turning points will be at most n. I, I, let, me, let me say this again. The number of x-intercepts on f is at most n, okay? So a function can never have more than n x-intercepts on its graph. A consequence of this has to do with turning points. A consequence that every polynomial has at most x, or has at most n x-intercepts, where n is its degree, is that the number of turning points is at most n minus one. You can't turn directions more than n minus one times. And the idea behind it is essentially the following. I mean, admittedly, the, the, the true argument comes from calculus here. Um, when we look at the derivative of a polynomial, which is itself a polynomial. But if we had like say four x-intercepts, what are the possibilities? We can kind of get something like this. In order to match up with four x-intercepts, best case scenario in terms of turning, we kind of get like four turns in the, or three turns in the graph there, one less than the degree there. And again, the, the argument is a little bit more complicated than that, but when you're graphing a polynomial, you cannot put too many turns on the graph. You can't have more turns than one less than the degree of the polynomial. And so with that in mind, we are now ready to play our, everyone's favorite game show, Who's My Graph? Yeah. Imagine we have a polynomial function listed here on the screen. We have f of x equals x to the fourth plus 5x cubed plus 5x squared minus 5x minus 6. Now our eligible bachelorette today, she's looking for a graph to complement her formula. Now let's learn a little bit about our bachelorette today. She is a polynomial uh, of degree 4 and her leading term is x to the fourth. Oh, that's so great. So from this, we can learn a lot about her in behavior. Her constant term, negative six right here, I wanna mention corresponds to her y-intercept. Because if you have a constant poly or if you have a polynomial and you plug in zero to find its x-intercept, you plug in zeros for all of the x's, but as the constant term doesn't have a zero, that's the only thing that resides. That's the only thing left over when you plug in zero to find the x-intercept. And so now let's meet our eligible bachelors today. We have four graphs that want to be matched up with f of x right here. So what can we say about these functions? What are some things we can say? Well, our, so these are some of the questions that our, our function is going to ask her graphs right here. So graph, graph A, what can, are you compatible? Are you a good match for our function f of, f of x right here? Well, a here is going to say things like the following. Well, when you look at my end behavior, I have the end behavior of an even function. I point up on the left-hand side. I point up on the right-hand side. So I'm an even degree function with a positive leading coefficient. Oh, our, our function f is swooning over such a comment right there. Um, function A also tells us, I should say graph A also tells us that I have exactly three turning points on my graph which indicates that my degree does not exceed four. Oh, ooh, our, our, our lady here is really loving this so far. This is so great. This is so amazing. Um, so good. And so, so far she should put little notes right here. She really likes, she really likes graph A. He's got the right leading term. That's exactly what, what she needs. Um, it points up on both right and left hand side, has the right number of turning points. It's, it's no more than three, that's great. Well, when we come over and look at graph B, graph B actually proposes to be the exact same way. It's like, 
uh, I'm graph B right here. I also am a positive even degree polynomial. So on my right hand side, I point up. On my left hand side, I also point up. I am a true optimist in that degree. I'm always pointing up. My number of turning points is also three, which is one less than four, which means my degree does not get bigger than four. Wow, such good options for our function f today. She's liking both uh, graph A and graph B. When we come over to graph C though, let's see. I mean, he he tries to tries to act like things are going on right here. It's like, oh, I'm a I'm a positive even degree polynomial as well. I'm pointing up on the left, I'm pointing up on the right. That means my leading coefficient's positive and my degree is even. But and and so yeah, our function f, she really likes that. But then when she counts the number of turning points that he has, one, two, three, four, five. If you have five turning points, that means the degree in is at least six. That's not compatible with our with our bachelorette right here. So she's going to turn down graph C. He is not the right choice for her. Uh, too many turning points. Too many turning points. She only wants a graph who is going to have at most three turning points. Um, we look at graph D, and the first thing she sees is that graph D does in fact have three turning points, just like she would just like she would like. But wait a second. Well, the graph is the end behavior is pointing in the same direction, that does indicate to her that this function is an even degree polynomial. Turns out there's no odd polynomials whatsoever in our group today, that's great. But notice everything's pointing down. This would tell us that the leading coefficient of this graph here is negative. And so we got graph D here, it's like, I hate everything, I'm a pessimist. His leading coefficient's negative. Um, and as such, that's not gonna be compatible for, uh, for our lady right here. So she's gonna turn down graph D as well. So she's got to come back to graphs A and B, which they both had positive lean coefficients. They both had even degree. Uh, they were both even degree with the turning points at most three, which would indicate that, yeah, these could these are likely X. Uh, the leading term is likely some positive coefficient times X to the fourth. Um, but how does she decide which one it is? Uh, which one to choose here? Well, it turns out the, finding, the final description we're going to use here is going to be that constant term, right? The constant term corresponds to the y-intercept. When you look at graph A, graphs, graph A has a positive y-intercept. It, it, it intersects the y-axis above the x-axis. Graph B, on the other hand, we can see has a negative x or y-intercept. So if everything created equal, B turns out to be the most compatible function for f right here. It had the correct end behavior, it pointed up on the right, it can point it up on the left. It had the correct number of turning points, it had at most three. Now just to be clear, not every x to the fourth graph will have three turning points, it could have only maybe one turning point, uh, but you can't have more than three turning points if your degree is four. And then finally, it had the correct y-intercept. And so therefore, it, our, our winner of today's game, who is my graph, is gonna be graph B. And so our funks in their graph are going to go on a very romantic date to the to the most romantic restaurant in town, and we'll let them we'll let them go have their time together. And that also brings us to the end of our lecture today, uh, lecture twenty three in our series about polynomial functions. Everything we talked about in this lecture was to help us better understand graphs of polynomial functions, as illustrated in our little game show we played here. In the next lecture, we're gonna we're gonna practice. We'll we'll learn a little bit more about things that go into graphing polynomials, and then we'll put all of that to the test and start graphing, graphing our own polynomials. So stay tuned for our next episode, uh, which hopefully you should see the link for that on the screen right now.